Hi everyone, thanks so much for choosing my tutorial today. In this tutorial uh, we will paint a baby face or if you want to choose another photo, probably another face. If you go close to, for example, this still life, you will see that everything built up with individual uh, brush stroke layered on top of each other. And you only can see the brush stroke because he always had to wait until her, his previous layer dried and then he can edit the next layer and this is how you can see all those br brush strokes still. I am also very big fan of layering and I use many many times. For example when I paint portraits uh, that's one of my go-to technique and you can see in these two examples. Here I show you a much better uh, watercolor, watercolor portrait artist than me. Uh, her name is Ali Kavanaugh. Sorry for the pronunciation, it's probably not right. And um, uh, if you see it closely, you can see that she used layering extremely extensively, especially on a face part. So look the eyebrow or look just the shading around the cheek and uh, you will see it's it's not 100% but very very much about layering it's very clean again on a face on a cheek especially but everywhere else so that's what she used very well but if you're not convinced she always or many times post on instagram for example uh, paintings in stages and when you look those stages uh, you can clearly see how it's built up by layers uh, as I wanna teach you today. She always used very um, like neutral color layers so on a face um, it's her style. You can go extremely bright, clean colors too. It's on you. You can even paint with one color, but then you won't learn about uh, making colors by layering. And as you can see on this example too, layering give you values and also colors. So it's important both. So it's better to practice with, uh, with colored, but it's a good method for monochrome. Here is even a better, more interesting uh, example because you can see four stages. So when I show these four stages, one thing is very apparent. Uh, she built the whole painting together. She not working on one spot and finishing it up and then going to another, no. She put down a layer regarding the whole painting always and uh, then go to the for the next layer also everywhere. So first start just very light and put a, the, the, those light tones everywhere. And then next stage she build up on this and darken those first uh, areas which are usually the darkest spots on the painting and so on. So you start with, with the darkest areas but uh, you, you put it down light and then you put the next layer and you darken those areas with one layer with, which already done and you adding new areas just with one layer and uh, they stay lighter and so on until you built up four, five, even ten layers depend on your color values. If you tend to work with very dark colors um, then you only have three layers probably maximum if you can really make light washes uh, on each layers you can build uh, a lot and of course it's okay if you not only use layering because what I'm trying to show here is painting organically uh, not uh, very it I, I don't want to I want you to enjoy it not just thinking about the technique so I, you will see I'm painting very fast and fresh and don't worry about if it's if it's melting together or wasn't completely dry just go on and do it and try to enjoy it so this is the last picture is a 
is just the three stages of that painting we will do. And I just put it here because I want to show that each stage uh, give you a complete, uh, kind of almost complete painting. So uh, you can stop almost in any, any uh, given layer number when you like it. So that's another thing I want to say. Um, I probably, I think, have four sessions on this painting, four different uh, layer. Um, it's not like for everywhere, don't misunderstand me. <laughs> it's just I four times wait for drying and start to add new layers. So, uh, but if yours is, you really like it after two or you want to add one more, that's fine. You need to stop when you like it and you, you feel that it's ready. So next I will explain the tools and the materials uh, you need for this tutorial. So first I'm showing the paper I used. I used the Longton Prestige uh, cold press watercolor paper in block size. Uh, I think it was 14 by 20 inches, uh, but I only used one side of it, so I didn't need it the whole paper. Uh, the face was approximately live size, I think. Um, the, this paper is excellent. So if you can buy this and you like to try new paper and you can afford it, uh, that's, that work absolutely amazing for this tutorial. The layering is beautiful on it. It's dry um, pretty well, uh, not too long. So I really suggest that. It's excellent. Um, I worked with this technique on many different paper and I had otherwise <laughs> this paper has issues, but with this layering technique, this Stonehenge paper was amazing. And I think it's a cheaper paper. You have to compare prices because I bought many things years ago, so I don't know for sure. But this Stonehenge paper, exactly the one on a photo, which is a cold press, um, also was a block, worked awesome. Uh, of course, arch paper never disappoint. If you can afford, that would work again awesome. Although, arch paper dry slower, at least in my hand. So maybe you need to wait longer a little bit if you use that one. But no matter what, I really suggest it's amazing. Kilimanjaro paper supposed to be cheaper and it's pretty good. Uh, for this, because you don't need to wet the paper so crazily, the thinner would work too, and the thinner is cheaper. So, because here you only use, the, the water control is very important, so you won't soak the paper. Uh, uh, and that regard, the thin one will be fine. The thicker is just easier to work on. The fluid uh, work really well again for this tutorial. It's, it's, mo it's not a, a high, high uh, quality watercolor paper. It's a cellulose paper. Uh, it has many issues, but uh, I use for many things. I love it. It's trickier to work on because things coming off faster and it's if it's too wet, it's wrinkling, but um, it will work if you cannot afford more pricey. And even the Canson XL can work. Uh, of course, the, the cheaper the paper, it's the quality obviously correlate, but um, for example, for the cat paintings I explained, you wouldn't be able to do on Canson Excel because you need to soak the paper and this paper would just fall apart. But for this tutorial where you put down very light washes, the Canson Excel would work too. After you will need several big water bowl uh, for this layering technique, clean water, clean paint, and cl uh, clean brushes are very important. Keep everything very clean. Every time you pick up a light wash, make sure it's clean. So I suggest minimum two, but maybe three, four, even more, a big water bowl around you. Transparent or white is better because you see when the water is dirty. 
Regarding brushes, uh, I use very few, uh, mainly two brushes, one bigger and one smaller. The big one was a flat wash from Silver Black uh, Velvet on what you can see on a photo. And for thinner, I think I used the same about size 8, um, but uh, Princeton Aqua Elite or um, or Princeton um, uh, Neptune would work perfectly. So one bigger. It's okay if it's not a flat wash. Uh, you can have a round wash around 20, round 20 and around 8 from any of these brushes is fine. Or any watercolor brushes. Just have one thicker one and one uh, thinner one. I found very useful the flat wash. It's... Uh, it's a, a three-quarter inch flat wash. Each brand have that too, so uh, the, uh, this round, uh, uh, you will see when I paint. Uh, but the, the, the plain round uh, will work. This is a flat wash with a round, uh, uh, it's not a square end, but a round end. So I also use the watercolor pencil to outline the face. And uh, any brand, uh, neutral, gray color, brown, any neutral color is fine. Regarding paint, uh, please use any, uh, even student grade, but better if it's artist grade watercolor set you have at home. If you have six, six color, you are fine. The more, the better, I think. Any, any watercolor kit will work. Um, if you have to buy paint or you want to buy paint, uh, I really suggest to buy the Daniel Smith um, or a Schminke or Adam paint, if you can afford it. Um, and I think both, but Daniel Smith for sure, have this dot card where you have all the 238 color uh, they, they sell and you can try every single one. And uh, so this will help you to build your color kit. If you're buying, buy just uh, five, 10 colors first and this, uh, and this dot card, uh, because this uh, dot card um, will help you to really choose uh, what you need and it contains, um, a lot of paint so you can paint several paintings just using this dot card and while you're using it and testing it out you can decide what colors to buy to your uh, color set so i'm i don't want to give suggestion by the colors it's not just colors it has quality uh, labels on this dot card you know how transparent are the colors for example this technique the transparent are the best the transparent colors but i love the the granulating colors or i love all of them honestly but you also can see how much they revet for example after they dry so for example i'm suggesting to buying ones which which revet easily because it's harder to work always taking out freshly from the tube so so you can learn a lot about each color and also you can test it together and then you just uh, know what you like and what not. And other than that, you will need uh, some kind of wipe. I'm using Kim Wipe, but uh, that's probably you won't buy. And that's okay, but you need some kind of uh, paper, which is not falling apart from water. My experience with tissue paper is really bad. It's sticking on the wet watercolor paper. Um, and fall apart and toilet paper that though same uh, but uh, uh, probably kitchen paper towel uh, can work or any wipe you usually use uh, many people use cloth uh, I don't have experience with so that's what you need um, and uh, in the next section we start to paint So if you have everything ready, uh, we can start to draw out uh, the baby face. This is uh, just a helper. 
not about making a perfect baby face or not even making anything similar to the photo. It's just an approximate uh, line drawing what is where on that face. And if it's not perfect, don't worry about this tutorial is for learning the layering technique and use the layering technique, what I called organically. So very naturally um, and to understand what you're doing and why. The idea will be uh, uh, just uh, the drawing just tell you um, reference points like the eye, but not the details, just the line. Very, very simple. Same with the mouth and the nose, the bottom of the nose, because imagine when you put down the layers, you always need to form that layers to a given shape and uh, you will know the shape based on this reference point. So you will know like it's next to the nose or below the nose or above the eye, next to the eye. So you, you need this reference point. Although you can do totally without the drawing, you can, if you have uh, this skill, drawing skill, then you find without this outline. When I made this tutorial, my idea was uh, really, uh, especially if you're not familiar with this technique, just concentrate on the layering part. It's already not easy. Uh, and this is a tutorial, so I, I prefer or I suggest for you just make this tutorial about one thing. And this, in this case, it is the technique, the layering. So you need to be just aware when you put down a color, a little color surface, which is a little layer, just the shape of that, the placement, the volume and the color. Every time you put down a new little layer, this is the fourth thing which you need to think through where I put it, what is the shape, what is the color, and what is the value. This tutorial is all about that. So you can see the drawing is quite simple, and I'm using those little parts like eye, nose, ear, outline, and neck as a reference point just when I'm putting down a layer, so I don't need to think about that. That's it. So when you have the paint in your brush, you already decided the color and the color value, how dense is your paint. And now you looking your reference points, which are the drawing, and you decide the placement and the shape. And if you start with darker values, you can't put as many layers, it's harder to correct. Uh, and it's easy to correct the lighter value just to add the darker value and change the shape but it's it's harder when it's darker so i suggest to start with lighter layers also uh, uh, what i'm doing here i'm working on everything together so you can see i'm working pretty fast and every time i add something it's uh my paintings still stay like almost like a like you can see the baby face. So it's not like you paint here and just one side and then you finish and then you go to the other side. No, it's not a good tactic here. Build everything together, the whole painting, even the background, everything together. So of course, there will be always uh, things which is a little bit more developed, but then you let, let that part, especially because it needs to be dry anyway for the next layer, and just go to the area which you didn't work on it for a while and it's dry already and try to build everything together always compare your previous uh, 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 layer or whatever you already have on your paper to the photo and check where you have to to make modifications either color or value or shape of the of the of the layer shape <laughs> i don't know how to say it so yeah each time you put down a layer it has a shape so just let's just call it each shape for now so you always think about that shape and how dark is it and what color 
that's that's what you need to keep in mind you can use another photo actually because uh, another face it it will be very adaptable i think to if you have a photo you want to use with good shading on it so don't choose something with a full flash on a face because that probably won't not the best example for layering but something with one side uh, light uh, lighted a lot and another side in a sh in, in in darker because it's in a shadow so that's what i suggest if you don't want to work with this photo so you can see i build everything together Backga background clothing uh, everything with this technique very important to at least uh, leave some kind of drying uh, for the first layer it's not a big deal if you paint two layers and the first one is not dry but you can't do that all the time because then it won't be layering it will be more like um, blending and stuff so if you want to keep the layering technique, uh, try to use mainly that. So it won't be 100% that, but mainly. So wait uh, always for drying. And I have several parts in this in this baby face painting tutorial, At le I think four at least. Uh, I really suggest to leave real breaks between the parts, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, because it it will just help you to add new layers which is not blending into the previous one because the previous has time then to to dry up properly so i suggest that i think i did it that way too i i waited many times and i many times not waited even enough to dry just it dried almost everywhere but not everywhere so and this is what i suggest to you and you can see I'm still very developing everything in the same time. So almost it's like uh, taking out a photo from, um, you know, that photos like from the 80s when uh, you, you, it's, it come out white, instant photos come out white from the camera and it slowly started to appear. It's, it's the same thing. So first the darkest spots appear, but in a light color. And as soon as you're adding light colors uh, <laughs> to the lighter places, you need to darken with the next layer your, your darkest spots. So this is your working method. So you can see I almost painted every uh, area now. It's really hard to... To do anything especially on a face without touching that area so i'm have a break now and wait a little bit and i'm coming back after so it's not completely dry but almost and i'm adding a new layer so uh, many times when layering happens i use my paper towel to lighten up layers so when you add really dark washes like I'm doing now, um, even if the, the end result should be as dark, I usually uh, make them a little bit lighter because it's give me ability for changing things. So it's, it's, not, it's not worth to, to set up very dark uh, values right away because it's, it gives you limitation eventually. So it will limit you eventually. And you will see many times I'm using my paper towel and, and lighten them up. So this is the second set of layer. So again, I just started. So some places are extremely dark compared to others. But I'm trying to building everything together. So on the end of this, this run, <laughs> this second run, I will end up with, again, with something uh, all together, uh, um, like 
not ready, I'm not saying it's ready, but all together, it's developed everywhere equally. So I won't have two extremely dark or extremely light areas. Although right now I have it, because I didn't have time yet to, to go everywhere. And my aim is not to be exactly like the photo, but if I look the painting alone, the colors and the values, uh, the whole system is, is fit together. So compared to the darkest point, uh, the other values are built up um, everywhere. Right now, if you found something very dark or too light, you can easily change both. So too dark, you can easily wash back because it's not dried yet. Uh, two, and of course you have two light areas because you're building, so you always need time to reach all the point of the painting. And don't worry about a wipe off or, or, or wash back things. It's exactly the time when you have to change on the way that you need to eliminate layers or colors or something to that. Just really use your paper towel or brush, loosen up the paint and wipe it off. Because as soon as it's drying, it will be much harder, if not impossible. And also you can see I'm using the new, uh, new layer, the colors, to modifying the previous colors. You see, I'm not using small brushes compared to the painting, so it's a pretty big flat wash brush. Um, I'm thinking in areas, big areas, big, um, big surfaces. Absolutely don't afraid from colors. You can see I'm using very, very clean colors. Blue, red, orange, purple. Not, it's not premixed skin color or anything. The layering is amazing because eventually you always compare to what you want to reach and you always modify by the next layer, the previous one. So don't, and it's more beautiful if you, at least in my opinion, if you use just more clean color layers. Like clean color, I mean like brighter color layers. Because you're building, so, so it, it, it's mixing, but you're mixing by the layers, not on your dish. So again, I reached the point when things start to melt together. So that can be good or bad. It's depend on how you want to continue. If you adding new layers and everything melting together and it bothers you, wait. It's maybe you are not exactly on, on the situation as me. So when you feel that you can't touch anywhere because it's just too much leaky, you can't add proper layers because everything melt together, then just wait a little bit. Five, ten minutes and you, are, you will have several dry surface. When you work, try to, not, try to uh, be very aware of your water control. So don't leave puddles. Just try to just add exactly the right amount of paint and uh, a right amount, with the right amount of water. So you won't have problem with the drying. Good watercolor paper usually behave awesome.
taking the water and uh, this is a really good paper it's long term prestige I absolutely adore this paper honestly I love more than ash it's it's just an amazing paper for everything As you can see now, I'm going back and forth between small and large brush uh, brushes um, because uh, now my some of my layers are pretty tiny. Uh, so I need a smaller. I mean, it's not necessary. You can do it with, uh, with a good pointy big brush, but it's just easier if you have a smaller brush. The water control, control is easier because... A smaller brush won't release as much water there as the big one. Uh, so when you add smaller uh, uh, little surfaces, use the small one. And when you do larger, do the large one because the small will run out. <laughs> so your brush will run out with, from the color if it's, too, if it's too small compared to the surface you want to cover. So just go back and forth between the brushes. Uh, uh, as 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 the as your uh, the size of your little layer require. So I'm doing now very small little touches, uh, especially because everything is pretty wet uh, now. So I'm getting close to the end of this uh, segment uh, and I need to wait again a little bit for get some good level of dryness. So you see, I'm removing when I think something too dark while you, I'm not very about wiping. And I, this is what I suggest to you. Just remove too dark things. Because that's when you can. Also, it will help with the drying. But don't remove just for drying. <laughs> don't do it. Just if you need to lighten up things. It's not that I won't go to that dark values. I will eventually. But uh, I would like to do it with more layers and, and more modifications. So I, when it's too dark, I wipe it off. It will be dark eventually, but with more layers and more chance for modification. So as I said, I, everything starts to melt, especially look at the head, the top of the head. So I need to wait if, if I want to continue with the layering technique. So I have a little break and then continue. Here I am back and starting to add the next uh, round of layers. Uh, my painting is very close to dry. Not every spot is 100% dry, but it's mainly dry. And um, I starting to build again. Um, so whatever I'm doing right now, it will be a little bit weird first, but then I build up the whole thing together again. and. Uh, then it will be balanced again uh, within the painting. Uh, if you like your painting any given state, uh, I, I strongly suggest to stop because there is no such a rule how many times you have to add layers. When you reach a point when everything within a painting is um, well balanced, I mean colors and values and you like the drawing you don't want to modify things just stop because 
there is no there is no rule how long you have to continue and if you want to continue longer than i do you can totally do it um, because this kind of layering technique especially if you use very light washes can be continued uh, for a while and actually that's a good thing of course if you started with uh, darker values it's harder uh, to build for a long time but that's fine too uh, on that case you can probably go over an area two three times when you use light washes it can be way more i don't want to give number but six definitely if you use very light washes but probably more so um as you can see now i'm going with very bright colors again but uh it First of all, watercolor lose a lot of brightness, unfortunately, most of the colors when it's dry and also values, so it will be lighter when it's dry. So don't worry too much. Uh, it will be a little bit lighter. Also, I try to build up the whole thing. So even it wouldn't get lighter, I add this darker uh, values everywhere again. If you do something you don't like don't worry uh, to modify it just wash it off of course it's much harder if it's an old layer uh, but old layer can be lightened up too but the newer layer um, is uh, what you just did it's very easy to remove with a good uh, clean brush or a good uh, paper towel Of course, as you darken uh, the part of the face, you have to think about backgrounds and stuff too. So, yeah, think about everything on, a, on, on your painting. Again, because we are on a stage when we have many details, uh, I suggest to use your brushes uh, as you need so when you need a larger area use larger and when you need a little more smaller little color patches more details use a smaller one it's just easier so just based on what you need As you can see, I'm using pretty bright color, bright pink, orange, dark red, blue, really bright orange. If, if the colors um, eventually build up a system where um, everything match up, uh, it, it won't be a problem. It's only a problem if things too bright compared to other things it's like a photo if you put your photo into photoshop or whatever program you can pull up saturation uh, in uh, very high or keep it very low and your your photo still uh, amazing but if you just pull up saturation on given part then it would be weird and it will have an extra meaning what is saturated and what not and uh, here because we're just painting this portrait with layering we don't want that of course if we doing some kind of artwork where we want to express something uh, that's that's a tool but this this tutorial is not about that so you can see how the head pop immediately as I add the darker background, it helps so much immediately. Everything just fall back to good again, like balanced. It's immediately, it's drastically changed the, the balance on a good direction, at least that's what I think, as soon as I add the darker surroundings. Of course, I have to finish up because it's a little bit look like a hair. 
weird hair, brown hair. This is what I'm saying. If something not match up with the whole system, then it has an extra meaning. Like the brown on the top of the head look like a punk hair. My old uh, teacher always uh, told that when you do a portrait, always watch the portrait that if that person or in this case it's this baby sitting front of you on a tramway, what what would be weird about it? And uh, then you immediately can start to see the weird stuff. <laughs> like currently this weird hair stuff, why the nose is so orange and so on. So you would have these questions. And that's the place where you have to make balance. Either make things brighter or remove the brightness on that given spot and finish up the dark background to make sure it's not look like a hair <laughs> and so on. So try to watch a little bit like this too when you paint a portrait. Although I have to admit this is not about the portrait. <laughs> so. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about if it's not a good portrait. It's really the technique I'm trying to teach. Learning to draw very well, it's a, it's a big deal. <laughs> not many people can do it and it takes many years or a lifetime to do it. So. You see, I'm not shy to wipe, so this is what I suggest. Use as a brush with a lighter color, since in watercolor with real colors you cannot go lighter. You only can go darker always, but if, if it's not dry yet, your little paper towel or your clean brush can be your light color. So. I like it to use and it's good if you build in your habit. Uh, it, it's a good tool. So now again see just I darken one eye and it's just weird. If this baby would sit on the tramway in front of you, what would you think? The other eye is missing <laughs> or something damaged. But without adding this darkness, um, it was just fine before. And now it's too sharp and too dark compared to the whole face. So always look for this. Thanks. And, and try to build the whole thing. As a, as a system. Always compare the, the one you're working on, the area you're working on, to everything else. Sometimes you have to wait until the next round that you can touch everything because maybe the area you have to touch is just too wet. And when you add more colors to that too wet area, it's usually get diluted up and, and not staying as the shape not staying as you wanted. So if the, especially if the shape is important. Uh, it's hard to do it on a wet surface because your paint will run <laughs> because it's a watercolor so it will run on a wet paper so because of that I am reaching again a point uh, very soon when I 
have to stop a little bit and let it dry uh, for depend on your paper too or how much area you painted but I think at least 10 15 minutes it's really depend on your situation so just restart when you have at least um, I don't know like 80% of the paper dry I mean the surface 80% of the surface so then you have enough area to to work So I am back and starting again. Now what is really weird and light is the on the on the left side of the painting so it's the right side of the baby on the lower part of the face it's pretty light also if i darken that area the mouth probably too light so Again, just think about the whole thing always. I really like to use squinting on my painting because then I don't see too much details, but I see the values and that's how to make decisions. And I just recognize that there is a big white area missing <laughs> on the right side of the painting. So I just lightened up a little bit and overpaint there to correct the shoulder position. And if you again ask the question, what is weird about the baby? It has a, um, a beard <laughs> right now. I'm just trying to say these things because you can maybe get, get that thing to look a portrait with this eye. That what is weird about that person? If you imagine that a real person. Because if you look at it as a painting, it's harder to see these kind of things, I think. Oh, I think I really needed that orange there. It's again, just put everything immediately in position, honestly. Uh, sometimes just you change one thing and uh, the whole balance is just normalized right away. I know I told this in other tutorials too, but I'm telling again, so watercolor works like the painted uh, colored glass so every time you put down a layer no matter what color is it you always lose the brightness coming from your paper the whiteness of the paper so no matter how light is the color the volume will be darker and darker every single time and as I see my painting, uh, watercolor don't like if the paper white is completely um, covered, like, I don't know, it's like suffocate. It's just no light coming from the paper. And I'm kind of in many places reaching that point. So this will be my last layer because I cannot deepen uh, any longer uh, given areas. And uh, I feel now I have very, very light and very dark areas and I can't go 
in in any direction more. So I cannot go whiter than paper white and cannot go darker as uh, some places on the painting. So I just need to make sure everything between the very dark and the very light balanced equally well and uh, like in comparison. And um, I need to make sure given parts where I have drawing issues uh, are corrected and uh, I'm done. Or I don't want to continue because then overdoing watercolor is just so common, I think. I, I, I know many people uh, have this issue. Like you always think, oh, I do a little bit here and there. And then you can just overdo it and destroy something was pretty fresh and, and great before. So need to be, think about that too, not overdoing it. So I know I'm pretty much reaching the, the end point. So at that point you just take when you feel you are close to the end. If you're not, of course, it's not <laughs> for you, but then you just continue as the previous sessions. But um, if you feel that you want to finish, just take a lot of back and forth, back and forth quick uh, switches with your eyes between the photo and the painting, or even just put next to each other, look at from a little distance, walk away from it for a few meters and watch it or squint on it on your painting and you will see the those little touches you need but if you feel it's close to ready remember it's close to ready so not you you definitely don't have too much thing left otherwise you wouldn't feel it's close to ready so so try to not uh, go in just go where you absolutely necessarily need to go So until that point, it was about the technique. Now spend a few minutes on about the portrait, portrait part and, and before you finish. And that's it kind of, at least for me. I hope it was a useful tutorial. I hope I was able to explain the technique. Uh, please comment. Uh, ask questions. Um, I hope to see you in my next tutorial.